Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic. Now available with Turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Welcome to Baltimore and beautiful Oriole Park in Camden Yards. Those fans are walking in on Utah Street. Now Ripken fan and a Dave Steve fan coming to watch the final game of this three game series. This will wrap up the seven game road trip. The Blue Jays have split the first six games of the win tonight. They'll go home with a winning record on this week long road trip. Let's take a look at the lineup for John Gibbons. Blue Jays. Michael Saunders, top of the order, has done a nice job hitting in the leadoff spot. 353 average. He has a couple doubles. He has scored five runs. Michael was two for four in last night's game. And then Kevin Pilar against Chris Tillman, six for 16. But notice he's hit three home runs out of those six hits, and he's driven in five. This might be just exactly what the Blue Jays need to get those bats going. A fly ball type of pitcher. That's what Chris Tillman is. This is fourth start of the season 153rd as an Oriole tries to end a six game losing streak to the Blue Jays. He made six starts versus the Blue Jays in 2015 didn't win any of them serving up 10 home runs and 40 hits and just 25 and a third innings and incredible 33 earned runs allowed against the Blue Jays last season. He's one win shy of tying Ben McDonald for 17th place on their Orioles all time wins list. This will be the 21st start of Tillman's career against the Blue Jays and he's allowed 26 home runs in those first 20 games. Michael Saunders steps in. Tillman works from an abbreviated windup. He is set. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. Down and in and Tillman buries that first pitch fastball. It's a new baseball for it too. Looked like he overcooked that one. Tried to throw that cutter. Overthrew it just a little bit. We'll keep an eye on that radar gun because all the reports out of Baltimore was that he was throwing harder so far this year. Well, he threw two innings in the opening game of the season against the Minnesota Twins and it rained. He struck out five of the six batters he faced in that game, and then the long rain delay knocked him out of the game. He was up to 95 miles an hour in that start. That is something that we haven't seen from Chris Tillman for a couple of years, 95. And if he is not throwing that hard, he better place it. In the opening, we showed you all the home runs that he gave up to the Blue Jays last year. And every one of those were about belt high and in the middle of the plate. Two balls and a strike to Michael Saunders. Bouncing ball up the middle. Scope can't make the play. Base hit for Michael Saunders. Saunders seems to like hitting top of the water. Lead off single for Saunders. Let's take a look at the Orioles defensively. Joey Rickard, the rookie in left field. Adam Jones in center. Nolan Rimo gets the start tonight in right field. Manny Machado, J.J. Hardy on the left side. Scope and Davis. Davis is the only infielder that has committed an air. For the Orioles so far, it's Tillman and Weeders. They make up the battery tonight. First big league season for Joey Rickard in left field. He started every game for the Orioles, and he really made the play of the game last night. I thought he got his first outfield assist when he gunned down Ryan Goins at the plate. Josh Donaldson homered last night. His sixth of the season. Donaldson went opposite field, hit the ball to right center. Leading off the fifth inning, that was off of Baldo Jimenez, who lasted just five innings. That hit Donaldson. No, it didn't. It was a foul tip. Check swing foul, and the umpire will give Tillman a new ball. Josh upset with himself because of that check, check swing. Let's see where it hit. Hmm. I don't see that very often. I yeah, just got the barrel of the bat right before it hit into the catcher's glove. Oh and two to Donaldson. Covers that outside pitch and stays alive. The Blue Jays have really struggled as a team with two strikes. Batting just 122 with two strikes. That's 28 in the majors. 
And Brooke Jacoby and Eric Owens, the two hitting coaches, are really kind of scratching their head as to what's going to get this team turned around with the bats. Another 0-2 pitch. Donaldson drills this one into the alley. Saunders is around second. He's headed for third. Louis Rivera's waving him home. Here's the throw from Rickard. There'll be a throw to the plate, but not in time. Josh Donaldson picks up his 15th ribby of the season. And just like that, the Blue Jays are out on top. Blue Jays had optional hitting for some of the guys. You didn't have to come out here. And Josh Donaldson was one of them who did not hit on the field today. I'm sure he hit down in the cage just to conserve a little energy and it works here in his first step bat. He climbs all over that fastball. You were talking about problems with the fastball. There it is right there. No problem as he drills it into left center field. Michael Saunders can trot home with the game's first run. Chris Tillman's not getting that fastball down. Bautista goes after the first pitch. This is the problem Tillman has had with this lineup in the past for his career. This lineup is at 321 against him. Will throw his share of fastballs and he comes right over the top. And he just has not been able to get the ball down against the Blue Jays. Bounces that curveball well in front of home plate. Jose was one for five in the game last night. He's reached base in all 15 games so far this season. He has three career home runs against the Orioles right. Off speed pitch Machado will look Donaldson back at second. Bautista's retired. So Josh Donaldson with his fifth double of the season stands at second base now one out and when Encarnacion had a good game last night drove in a pair of runs he was two for five in the game he's got an eight game hit streak slowly but surely we're starting to see some signs from some of these Blue Jay hitters that they're coming out of it Edwin his at bat yesterday with two strikes when he doubled the left center field. You can tell he's ready to start to go off and drive the ball now. Good cut. There's that 95 mile an hour fastball. We didn't see that from Chris Tillman in his last start against Texas. He was 91 92. Reach back for a little extra there. You know, I, I can't recall seeing that at all last year against the Blue Jays in his six starts. And a little bit more to it. That pitch is important, I think, only to put it in the minds of the Blue Jays. I think what he's going to have to do is what he did to Bautista is use his change up just a little bit more. He had him out in front on that one and got the game's first out. Edward checks his swing. Two balls and a strike. Chris Tillman was acquired by the Orioles in a trade with Seattle, February of 2008. They picked up Tillman and add Adam Jones in that deal with the Mariners. Bound over the screen out of play. The Orioles traded Eric Bedard and got Adam Jones, George Sherrill, Cam Nicolaio. Left-hander Tony Butler and Chris Tillman. That's a boatload of talent for one pitcher. Shows you the value of trading major league pitching, especially starting pitching, power pitching. You can get a lot of young kids, and if you're right, you can build your franchise. Two-two pitch downstairs. It's a full count. Troy Tulowitzki will be next, and he's starting to show signs of breaking up. One nothing Blue Jays. Ball four. So Encarnacion will take ball four. That'll bring Tulowitzki to the plate with 
Runners at first and second and just one out. Blue Jays doing it again. They lead the major leagues in pitches per plate appearance. They are number one. They're averaging over four pitches per plate appearance and they're doing it again here tonight. I don't know if that's such a good thing. I know they have been patient. They've been taking their walks but this is a team that's all about hitting. And I just think they're in between right now as far as their approach. I think they're going to start being a little more aggressive. I think pitchers from what we have seen the reputation of the Blue Jays great hitting they're nibbling and to the Jays credit they haven't been swinging at those pitches they've been laying off of them. The problem that the for me for the, the Jays offensively is when they get their pitches they're missing. Lewinsky with a good cut there was a pitch that he could hit. And I think that's you're right you're right on the money about that. I think that's something that's going to change. They've been getting a lot of pitches to hit. They've been fouling them back or they've been swinging through them or popping them up. And I think that's just repetition. You start playing just a little bit more and get into a nice rhythm you're going to start to see the Blue Jays hit those pitches. Like that one right there. That's right in his wheelhouse. Yeah. Just a little bit off. Gilman using that high fastball. Chris Tillman is four and ten in his 20 starts against the Blue Jays. ERA 579. Breaking ball bounced in the dirt. Once again, the Blue Jays wearing out the starting pitcher in the first inning. Michael Saunders started it all with a single to center, then Donaldson drove him home with a RBI double to the gap in left center. Orioles had to use six pitchers in last night's ball game for 10 innings. Six of them. And on their way doing that again tonight. Lewinsky covers that outside pitch and fouls it out of play. Buck Showalter has been concerned about his starting pitching. They just haven't given him the kind of depth they need. They've really been wearing out that bullpen early on, and that will catch up to you. Just foul outside of third. Troy Chilowitzki, now 31 years old. He came up in 2007 and finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting that year to Ryan Braun of the Brewers. Been an All Star 2013, 14, and 15. Had a couple of great years in 2010 and 11. He was also an All Star. Won Gold Gloves in back-to-back -back years and was also the Silver Slugger. And that's why John, Nash League. John Gibbons says, "I'm not worried about these guys. They're going to hit." It's a long season and there's no reason to panic right now. I, I, I've seen it before and I'll see it again from these guys. Another 2-2 two -two pitch popped up back behind home. Weeders back on the warning track is just over the screen. Well. Let's take a look at the last nine starts versus the Blue Jays for Chris Tillman. His ERA is about 10. Look at the opponent's batting average at 350 in the home runs allowed, the opponent's slugging percentage. They have really worn him out. He has not beaten the Blue Jays since that game back at Rogers Center when he got gave up seven runs all early, but he stuck around long enough to win. That was in 2014. Blue Jays need a big hit. They just haven't had that big hit to bust the game wide open. That hit where there's a, an exclamation point after it. High deep drive to left field. Joey Rickard back on the warning track at the wall and jumps and makes the catch. Donaldson went back and tagged up in second and in kind of so. Moves into second behind him. Mm -hmm. 
Boy, talk about a guy who just misses a ball. Tulowitzki got that high breaking ball and got under it just a little bit. And Rickert floated back on it. Looked like that that ball was going to leave the ballpark. He floats back on it, times his leap, and catches it before it lands in that first row. Now here comes Encarnacion into second base. He went into second base hard. That left hand really jammed up against the base. That's why he wears that pad, that sliding pad on that left hand. We're waiting on the Orioles who are waiting for an opinion out of their video room. Buck Showalter, the managers, asked the umpires to hold up. And again, this is this, what I think yeah. is a problem. You have to eliminate the communication from the bench to the video room. That takes too much time. If your eyes on the field tell you to review it, then you should review it. But I don't think you should have the time to look at every angle on every play. On every play. Now he's going to stall for a little bit. He's going to talk about it until he gets the idea of what they want to do. It looked from here and we're a long way away like he got the hand in there I guess the question is did he get knocked off of the bag and that's what scope was reacting to watch the tag of scope and then the hand may have come off the bag just because of Edwin's momentum but they're not going to challenge the play two outs now for Russell Martin runners at second and third. Russell did not play in the game last night. He was 0 for 3 on Tuesday night with a walk. He's another guy. If you watch him day after day, you see little signs from Russell that he's ready to bust out. And Brooke Jacoby was telling me today that he was taking batting practice. He's staying on the ball just a little bit better, driving it back through the middle a little bit better. He says his swing path is so much better right now. I had a big at bat against Greg Kimbrough. In Boston, a two run single. Looking for his first home run of the season. And he gets hit. Tillman continues to struggle here in the first inning. He hits Russell Martin. And that'll bring a left handed hitter to the plate in Justin Smoke. Smoke will bat with the bases loaded. Blue Jays left 10 runners on base last night. They had so many opportunities. As you see Russell get clipped in the tricep there. They had so many opportunities to win that game. And you're right, they just could not come up with the, the knockout punch, if you will, offensively. Here's a great opportunity right here for Justin Smoke to do something dramatic. That is Ramon Martinez who is filling in for Dave Wallace the pitching coach he's out to chat with Tillman see if he can't help him regroup a little bit. Well the Blue Jays have been hit a lot. That's the tenth time already they've been hit by pitches. Pitchers are trying to crowd them inside and they've been hit quite a bit so far this season. I think that's all that is it is again the Blue Jays reputation they're going to have to pitch him inside and the Ball's getting away from him. Justin Smoke. Smoke had a pinch hit single in the ninth inning in last night's game. Two outs. Upstairs. Well, we have seen this time and time again with Chris Tillman. He just can't get into the flow of the game against the Blue Jays. He mentioned his career record is four and ten. Against the Jays. Uh, he's got no fastball command, number one. He's bounced, I don't know how many breaking balls so far here in the first inning. So those two pitches, you can eliminate them right now. Foul back into the seats over the Blue Jays. Dug it. His changeup's not bad. He got uh, Jose to ground out on it. And got a couple of strikes against Tulowitzki with it. Tillman for his career has a 25 and 28 record against the AL East. This is his 76th start. Two balls and a strike. Again, we mentioned the Blue Jays have been lacking that big hit to this bust is, the game right open. This is it right here. This is 
This is a chance to do some damage early in this game. There's that change up you mentioned. That's been his best pitch this inning. I think so. He hasn't been able to control the other ones. You know, another thing that a big base hit will do here are multiple runs in the first inning. Put a little pressure off the Blue Jays starting pitcher. Two balls, two strikes. Oil fans trying to encourage Tillman. Full count. 33 pitches thrown by Tillman. The base runners will be off on the pitch. Kevin Pillar would love to get an at bat here in the first inning. Buck Showalter continues to have concerns about his starting rotation. Orioles moving into a shift. There go the runners fouled into the seats. Again we talk about starting pitchers you'd like to see them around 15 to 16 pitches per inning and they train themselves for that you get up over 30 pitches it's like a boxer fighting a five minute round run out of breath your legs start to feel bad there you Jimenez through about 104 innings last night it taxes that bullpen popped up over near the Blue Jays dugout and back out of play. Well, if you subscribe to that theory, 15 to 16 pitches, Chris Tillman is starting the third inning. <laughs> but he hasn't had a chance to sit down. <laughs> Justin Smoke looking for his first RBI of the season. A base hit here, he'll get two. Runners are off. Ball four. A bases loaded walk in the Blue Jays. They've taken a two nothing lead. The fans are going crazy here, but that pitch really wasn't even close. It was way off the plate. Smoke's had some good at bats. He's taken his share of walks. Picks up his first RBI of the season the easy way. Buck Showalter on the phone. Bullpen starting to move around, and Tom Cheedy, the bullpen coach, has given instructions to somebody to start getting loose. Kevin Pillar will bat. Takes the first pitch strike. You know, we showed all those home runs in the opening. Last year, Tillman against the Blue Jays. You know who the home run leader was for the Jays versus Tillman? He's staying at home plate. Kevin hit three home runs last year against Chris Tillman. Little chopper towards second. Hardy will flip to scope. That'll end the inning, but the Blue Jays scored two runs on two hits and a couple of walks. Chris Tillman gives up an RBI double to Josh Donaldson. He drives home Michael Saunders, Donaldson's fifth double, his 15th RBI.
nothing lead after the top of the first let's take a look at the Orioles lineup top of the order is the rookie Joey Rickard he's got a five game hit streak over that hit streak he has three doubles and an RBI he made a good defensive play last night throwing out Ryan Goins and old Blake Manny Machado nobody's hotter than Machado right now he's got a 13 game hit streak hitting over 400 during that stretch with 11 extra base hits Manny Machado was two for three in last night's game. Marco Estrada takes the mound for his third start of the season will face a team for the first time this year not named the Boston Red Sox his first two starts against Boston last time out second straight start against Boston he only made in my mind one bad pitch that was the pitch to Xander Bogarts it was a three run home run that snapped a career high tying streak of five straight quality starts for Marco last year he made four starts versus the Orioles and held him to a 143 batting average. Marco misses with that first pitch to Joey Rick. Rick at three for five in the game last night. He scored a run. Checking out Donaldson. He's on peak to third. Just in case he sees an opportunity to drop down a bunt. He might be the most patient batter that the Orioles have. His at bats so far in this series have been good. Good at bats. Might not hit the ball hard. Look at that. He's not afraid to take a 2 0 fastball right there. Well, they put him in the leadoff spot. They had Manny Machado there for a while, and then Rickard started swinging the bat well, so they put him top of the order. Estrada, as Pat mentioned, had that rough inning in Boston. It started out by him getting hit by a comeback off the bat of Jackie Bradley Jr. The fastball strike. Estrada said his problems last time out against the Red Sox, he couldn't elevate his fastball. Tried to get it up and into Xander Bogarts and left that out over the plate. There's a good pitch. He jammed the record. Couldn't elevate it. And, and it's really interesting when you talk about that. He wants to elevate, he wants to get it above the belt, above the belly button, up to the to the letters. Feels like he can pitch up there. Donaldson had that ball go off his glove. It may have gone through his webbing. And he's looking at his glove as if it broke, but he kind of nonchalant and expected it to be a line drive out, and that's what happened. The yep. ball went right through the webbing of his glove. Yeah, that, that was right in the glove. And right through it. That's the third time this year we have seen this from the Blue Jays. Troy Tulowitzki, it happened to him. And now a ball that should have been the first out of the inning. It's right at him. He backhands it. And he is so surprised. <laughs> Look at that thing. It's right in the webbing and then through the glove. That is a very strange feeling. He had a beat on it, got to it, put his glove up there, and then the ball went right through the webbing of his glove. That is a tough base hit charge to Marco Estrada. If he shuts him down the rest of the way, <laughs> that would be a tough one. That is Josh Donaldson's backup glove that he had to go in and find. Here is the red hot Manny Machado. First pitch breaking ball in there for a strike. Machado in the game last night was two for three, a couple of walks. They walked him intentionally in the tenth. Change up misses downstairs. This is a much more patient Oriole team this season than we've seen in the past. Especially this guy right here. You, you can find ways to get him out. He would start expanding the strike zone this year. A little bit more patient. Chris Davis is more patient. Adam Jones. There goes the runner. Martin's throw is in front of the base and. Go and said I tagged him. He immediately turned to the dugout and pointed to John Gibbons. Martin's throw tailed on him and moved away from the bag. Goins moved with the ball and 
slapped at the runner as he was passing by. You know, that was a tough throw for Russell Martin because he had to throw around Manny Machado. That is the crew chief, Tom Hallion, looking right on there, and he says he didn't tag him. Let's see. When he swiped down, did he get him? Looked like he got his shoe with that first swipe. Well, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go to the replay. Tom Allen, the crew chief, made the call. Third base umpire, Tony Randazzo, will come down with him. And there's the hand on the bag, and that's going to be a tough one to overturn. There's got to be concrete evidence that the tag was made before the hand got on the base. Been watching this now for a couple of weeks, the replays. If it's not conclusive evidence, they go, they go, have to go with the call on the field, and the call on the field is safe. So you you got to find an angle that shows that he tagged him. This replay review is powered by Samsung. Well, we have had a lot of reviews in all ball games all around baseball. Yes. And again, I mention it again because I think it's a very important aspect of this. If you think that you want to review the play, I don't think you should have the ability to communicate with your video room. Just keep the game on the field. Let the guys in the dugout and on the field determine whether or not you want to challenge the call. So you might want to hold on to your challenges then and not use them in the first inning because they'd be gone. I don't know if there's a definitive camera angle that shows that he touched the runner. I, I, I don't think there is because Rickert did a good job of sliding away from that tag. Watch him get a feel for the game that he was. The throw was going to be close to him, so he bent out of the way just a little bit. Goins' glove hooks the foot of Joey Rickard, but it looks like his hand was on mm -hmm. the base when he made contact. The only way that they're going to overturn this is the first swipe that Goins had at Rickard. If he touched him, he's out. If he missed him, if they determine he missed him, and I think he did. The one camera angle that I saw looked like they missed it. He missed the tag that he's going to be safe. Yeah, he missed the initial tag and then stayed with it. The umpires appear to be close to getting a decision here. Tony Randazzo, the third base umpire, he's about ready to take his helmet off and hits it. Yeah, they will uphold it. That was a tough one to overturn because there was no clear cut evidence. Right. That Goins and tagged him. That's the first stolen base of the season for Joey Rickett. And Marco Estrada, he had to keep throwing, try to stay loose. See, if I'm not 100% sure, I'm saving that. I'm, I'm not even challenging that. It's only the first inning. Ground ball up the middle base, hit Rickett around third. He's going to score. Manny Machado is on fire. A 14 game hit streak and he drives home the first oil run. You know he's a smart hitter too and I'll tell you why. You got that runner at second base. It was a long time trying to figure out if safe or out at second base. And he's like that pitcher's not throwing much first fastball I see I'm going to let it go. And he gets the pitch to his liking. It's a little out away from him he's able to keep keep that ball right back through the middle. And now he has hit in every game this year. Machado's average up to 418. So Blue Jays' first two batters had two hits. The Orioles returned the favor. Adam Jones, center fielder. He drives the ball deep to center. Pilar is back. He can't make the play. Over his head, he plays the carom back in. Machado stops at third. Jones at second. Rough start for the pitchers tonight. <laughs> yeah. One of those kind of games, huh? Adam Jones drills this ball. I think it sliced back on Kevin Pilar. You see, he overran it just a little bit as he starts to reach back for it. The ball is slicing over his head. 
for extra bases. We have seen Kevin make this play over and over and over again. This time just overruns it a little bit. Ball moved around on him, gets it back in and holds that runner at third. Chris Davis. Nobody out. Davis was one for three in the game last night. He had an RBI in the first inning for that single. He had a single off the scoreboard in right. And I contend this whole inning could be different if that ball was caught by Donaldson. If it doesn't go through his wedding. wedding. Line drive to the third baseman broke right through the webbing of Donaldson's glove. He has since changed gloves. There's that change up two and one now to Davis. All you can do if you're a pitcher pitching against an American League East team, just keep pitching. Yes. <laughs> you can't let a run or two bother you because chances are your club's going to score some runs. Continue to make pitches. There's that high fastball. Looked pretty good. And so Martin hesitates as he throws the ball back to the pitcher, but Estrada elevated that pitch effectively. The dangerous Mark Combo was on back. Full count to Davis. Bases are loaded. Mark Trumbo off to a good start this season, batting 383, 373, excuse me. Five home runs and 11 RBIs. Still nobody out. Mark Trump in his first season with the Orioles has gotten off to a great start. They're the batting leaders in the American League. Manny Machado with a hit in his first at bat up to 418. Nothing like doing something special in your first couple weeks with a new team. And Trumbo, he's been around. He's been in the American League. He spent some time in the National League with Arizona. Now he's back in the American League with Baltimore. It's a good fit for him. He's a fly ball type of hitter. Muscles the ball out of here. He's got tremendous strength. Fits right in with his Oriole team. Ball on the strike. Change up, he wouldn't chase. Trumpo became the first Oriole to hit five home runs within his first 10 games with the team. That's how you become a Big part of your team right away. <laughs> the welcome mat is out, right? And you get accepted very quickly when you do something special like that. Blue Jays are playing the infield back. They will trade a run for a couple of outs to help Marco Estrada through this inning. Chris Tillman gave up two runs on two hits. We bought a couple and hit a batter. And all of a sudden, it's a one run game. He's right back in it. Three and one to Trumbull. Fastball struck.
hasn't been a lot going on in this first inning. Huh? Great day so far <laughs> to be a hitter. Man, waiters waits on deck. I thought Tillman, excuse me, Buck, did a great job of limiting his exposure to the Blue Jays. He was in massive trouble and he only gave up two runs. Let's see if Marco can do the same thing. By three call, delayed call by Dan Bellino and Trumbull. Not happy with the call. Let's give some credit right there to Russell Martin. What a job of pulling that one back into the strike zone. So it's a change up three and two. Look at that ball dance off of his finger. But watch Martin. He starts low and brings it up. And there's the delay call as Russell holds it right there in a big first down for Marco Estrada. Well, Estrada has proven time and time again he'll throw that change up any time. Three, two bases loaded, nobody out, and he gets a huge strikeout of Crumble. Matt Wieters did not play in the game last night. Crumble can't believe that Paul third strike. You know what that strikeout does? It gives Estrada a chance to get out of this inning. He's got a runner at the plate in Weeders. If there's a ball on the ground, Blue Jays can turn two. They can go home to first if they want to. If it's back to the mound, they can go around the diamond. And he's got to make a pitch. He's got to get that ball on the ground. On the ground, smoke it first, goes to second for one. Return throw in time. There's that double play, Justin Smoke. Grabbed the grounder through to second for one. Got the double play. Strata minimizes the damage. The Blue Jays still lead it. Yards. The two ball clubs had a very interesting first inning. Blue Jays scored two. The Orioles responded with a run of their own. There have been five hits in the ball game already, and we head to the top of the second. It'll be Ryan Goins, the number nine hitter, then back to the top of the order. Eight men hit for the Blue Jays in the first. Tillman did a good job after the bases loaded walk to smoke. He got the Number eight hitter Kevin Pillar to hit into a fielder's choice to end the inning. Little tapper toward second. Smoke was deep and he makes the play in time. One away here in the second.
We have seen Chris Tillman in the past against the Blue Jays have a rocky start to his ball game and then settle down. Going to be a challenge for him tonight. Michael Saunders led things off with a single. He came around to score on Donaldson's double in the first. I remember that game. I think you're referencing a couple of years ago at uh, Rogers Center. It was something like six runs in the first couple of innings, and he looked like he was going to have a really short day. But he pitched well enough to get through five innings and gave his team a chance to win, which they did. And I remember we were talking to Buck Showalter the next day, and he said, that's the definition of a number one starter. A guy, even though he doesn't have his best stuff, he's going to battle you and he's going to get you deep enough into the ball game that you're going to have a chance to win. At the time, the Orioles bullpen was a little bit worn out and they needed Tillman to give him some length. And it didn't look like he was going to do it. Early on, they were battering him. I think you can say the same thing about tonight's ball game. Five relievers in last night's game. They need some length from their starter. Two balls and a strike to Michael Saunders. Drives this ball down the left field line. Rickards on the run. He's not going to get it. Hops off the wall. Michael Saunders is headed for a second with a leadoff double. His seventh double of the season. His second hit of the night. He's fitting in quite nicely. Thank you very much in that leadoff position. He's got a lot of hand movements. There's a change up up and away. He's got a lot of hand movement, but you can see from that replay, he gets his hands back. He gets it going in a nice hitting position. Watch how the hands get ready and he drills that ball to left field for extra bases. Josh McDonald with an RBI double in the first. Picked up his 15th RBI of the season. Now Tillman steps off and he's called for his catcher to come to the mound. Donaldson's such a good hitter. They tried to go fastball up against him and he laced that thing to left field again. He and Bautista, I, I don't recall seeing them on the field today. It was optional batting practice. They play every single day, every inning of every game. So sometimes it's wise to get off your feet. Another high pitch cut on and missed. Coming ahead 0 and 2. Michael Saunders, we mentioned he hit his seventh double. David Ortiz this afternoon hit his eighth double. Well, Saunders is one behind David Ortiz for the lead in doubles in the American League. And he hits him from foul line to foul line. Last night he hit one down the right field line that was a thing of beauty. And he hit one down the left field line, and right now he just drilled one over the left fielder's head. Tell you what, Tillman needs some quick innings if he's going to last. 38 pitches in that first inning. He's up to 47 already in this game. Change up, Donaldson strikes out. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Very comfortable evening here in Baltimore. Blue Jays will return home. They play tomorrow night against Oakland. Bautista grounded to third base his first time up. Jose has 14 walks so far this season. That's what's led to that 429 on base percentage. Off the 
played inside. And that has been a beef the Blue Jays have had all season long, and they're right on. The strike zone has been inconsistent. The argument, I think, that Jose was just saying is that curveball almost hit me, and I didn't move. How could it be a strike? Same pitch, same result. You can see Jose steaming right now. Jose takes a lot of pride in his ability to recognize balls and strikes. And he's done a heck of a job of ignoring those bad calls. One and two, two outs. It really puts a hitter in a hole when you're fighting to get strikes and those pitches off the plate are called strikes. So now you have to expand your strike zone. Nobody on the team knows the strike zone better than Jose Bautista. I mean, look at pitch tracker. Not one of those pitches is in the zone. Two and two to Bautista, two outs. Michael Saunders at second. Late on that fastball, he just had to protect with two strikes, 94 miles an hour. Tillman's throwing better with that fastball we have seen the mm -hmm. last couple of years. We haven't seen that kind of velocity from him. The velocity is good. His location so far hasn't been good. He's going to have to get that ball down. Full count two outs. Edwin in front of Sean waits on deck. Ground ball, Machado to his left, scoops, sets, fires in time. Blue Jays leave a base runner. So far, they've stranded four. That's been an early theme for this offense. This began last night on the final play of the game when Josh Tolley's pass ball led to the winning run. After the game, Josh Tolley said all the right things. He stood up to the media and said, hey, regardless of what happens, I need to catch that ball. It's my fault. I let it go. Now, today I had a chance to speak with Joe Biagini, and Joe says, in fact, it was his fault that Tolley wasn't able to catch the ball. He said that Tolley called for one pitch. I threw a different pitch. It messed us up. I really have to learn how to learn the signals and make sure things like that don't happen. But regardless of whose fault it is, Buck, it's really nice to see the guys on this team not throwing each other under the bus and taking responsibility for things that do not go right. Because as you know, things not always going the way you expect them to. No, they don't, Barry, and that's a great point because that is gone. You can't get it back. And Josh Tolley did a great thing. He took the heat off the rookie and said, mm -hmm. you know what, I should have caught it. And he's right, he should have caught it. Yeah, it's harder when you call one pitch and anticipate another, but it's a cutter and a sinker. It's not like it's a curveball and a sinker. So, you know, Josh said, you know, I should have caught it. But it's they care about each point other. point now, and yeah. Josh did the right thing. There's yeah. no question He's a about that. Pro. Yep. JJ Hardy batting seventh. 
Well, the Orioles got a break when Joey Rickard hit a line drive to Josh Donaldson and it broke the webbing of that glove. It's since been repaired. J.J. Hardy hits a line drive to center. First out of the inning. Yeah, the one he brought back out was a little lighter than that one. So Jeff Ross must be sewing away up there in the clubhouse. Well, every equipment man in baseball has always been able to relace those gloves, whether it's the webbing lace or the laces between the fingers, whatever might break. You have to have enough of those leather straps to relace the gloves. Catchers have that happen a lot where it'll just go right through your glove and catch a ball in the webbing trying to maybe frame a pitch or receive it well and it pops right through that webbing. Jonathan Scope goes after the breaking ball. Ball and strike to the second baseman. Scope was 0 for 4 in last night's game. I, I never had that problem with my glove breaking. You never did. Never had to use it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird feeling, that's for sure. And, and Josh Donaldson knew he had it. He just kind of nonchalantly went, pulled the line, put and up his glove, and then the glove went right through it. Couldn't believe that he looked in his glove and there was nothing there. There's a good change up from the strike. Two and two. He's got that webbing. Sewn up like Troy Tulowitzki. Loose in the fingers. Right three caught. That low strike has been a good pitch for his strata. He got Trumbull with it in the first and gets scope here in the second. You know, when you follow a change up with a fastball and it's a low 90s fastball, it just looks faster. And scope is surprised. See, he can't pull the trigger on that fastball. It's right there. But that came after that changeup, that beautiful changeup. Number nine hitters, Nolan Rimel. He entered the game last night in the ninth as a pinch runner. He takes the first pitch strike. Strike two. And Strata's getting zeroed in now. Yeah. Down there now he can elevate if he wants to. He knows Nolan Rimo likes the fastball. How about that perfect pitch? He hits the glove. Russell Martin will take just three this inning. Thank you. Three up, three down. Couple of strikeouts for Estrada as he retires the side in order. Big bats for the Blue Jays coming up when we come back. West Gem and the Blue Jays will wrap up this seven game road trip tonight and they'll head back to Toronto play at the Rogers Center tomorrow night it starts a three game series against the AL West Oakland A's and then the Chicago White Sox in town and the White Sox are getting tremendous pitching 
And then the Blue Jays will head right back down to Tampa Bay to see the Rays in St. Petersburg for a second time already this season. The Blue Jays have played 16 games. They've only faced three left handed starters all year long. Next homestand, you just saw it right there. There's six games, four games, four games in a row. The last one against Oakland, all three against the White Sox, left handed starters. And you know this team offensively, right hand top heavy. Edwin Encarnacion rips it on one hop right to J.J. Hardy. That ball caught Hardy. Edwin hit it hard, but right to the shortstop. One away here in the third. Well, Eric Surkamp, the left-hander, will pitch on Sunday, the series finale for Oakland. That'll be against Marcus Stroman. And then the White Sox will come to town, and Chris Sale will open up. They've got a great start there in Chicago. White Sox are 10 and 5 going into play. They've won two in a row. Oakland's 8 and 7 are playing in New York tonight. And the Yankees currently have a 1 0 lead. Troy Tulowitzki flying out to center field his first time. Blue Jays starters have done a terrific job in the early going. Marcus Stroman, 3 0. Jay Happ, 2 0. Aaron Sanchez will open up the Oakland A's series. And he'll be matched up against Sonny Gray. A marquee matchup on Friday night. Here's another one. Should be a lot of fun. When you talk about Oakland and Chicago, you're talking good pitching. Lewinsky tried to check and went too far. Another good fastball from Tillman, but it's out of his own bounds. Still missing his spots. At least it's down. First inning, everything was up. He gave up those two hits right away. Saunders and then Donaldson on pitches that were up. So at least that one was down. Full count, one out. Russell Martin was hit by a pitch in the first inning. The Jays have stranded four already in this game. They left ten aboard last night. They lost four three in ten innings. The Jays were just two for twelve with runners in scoring position. They had plenty of opportunities to win plenty, that game. Plenty of opportunities and had a runner thrown out at the plate. And Ryan Goins. He mentioned it in his first at bat, Tulowitz. He's getting a few pitches to hit up out over the plate. It won't be long before he starts to square him up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a timing issue, I think, with a lot of these guys. And the timing is just not there. And once you start to get into that rhythm day after day after day, and the weather gets a little bit warmer, you start to feel a little bit more comfortable. You can see those cluster of pitches in the middle of the strike zone. Those are the balls that he has fouled back. Those are the ones he's going to start squaring up and he's going to start hitting them harder. Another called strikeout. Dan Bellino, the home plate umpire, has given the pitchers that low strike. That one looked like it was right there. I don't know if he was guessing along with them or what, but he took a fastball right there. Russell Martin will bat with nobody on and two outs. He had another pitch on his mind.
Blue Jays came into this game as a team batting 232. Last year they hit 269. Second in the major. They had a good season with the bats and these two hitting coaches, Brooke Jacoby on the left, Eric Owens on the right. They have been working hard trying to get the hitting turned around. They're missing fastballs. That's the problem. There are stats on there, the average versus the fastballs, and they're 20 points below the major league average. Martin chases one upstairs. Good inning for Chris Tillman. Three up, three down with a pair of strikeouts to go to the bottom of the third in Baltimore. Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead. Started throwing in the bullpen, but boy, what a season and what a turnaround from 14 to 15. Big breakout season last year, 2015. Uh, the numbers outstanding, the ERA, whip, and opponent's batting average. And he said, I added a pitch, I added a cutter. He said, he said that has helped me a lot. He said, my mindset has completely changed. He says, everybody seems to remember 2014, which was my worst season. And I followed that up with my best season. But he thinks that the cutter. Became a very important pitch for him last year. Instead of 204 seam fastballs that were getting whacked and hit hard, 2031 cutters then were just hit softly. Marco talked about the fact that in 2014, yeah, he had a rough season. He led the National League in home runs, allowing 29. But before that, he had a couple of decent seasons with Milwaukee, but last year by far was his best season of his career. That he mentioned something about the spin of the baseball and how he throws everything with a four seam spin and how might that help him be effective against the hitters. Well we talk uh, we've been talking about spin rate and, and he can really spin the baseball when it comes out of his hand. There's a great change up it sets up on that. He talks about his four seam fastball and his change up and his cutter and his curveball are all thrown out of the same arm slot. And when you do that as a hitter, you can't, you just can't pick the baseball up. There's no tell there. That's a changeup that really fools Ricker. And he can really spin the baseball. His four seam fastball average is 89 miles an hour, but there's there's also the perceived speed speed on his four seam fastball because of the way he can spin a baseball. And that's just a little bit better. Manny Machado had an RBI single in the first. He's driven home the only Orioles run. It's a 2 1 Blue Jays lead. I spoke to Dan Duquette, the vice president of baseball operations here with Baltimore, and the Orioles are using spin rate a lot in their evaluation of their pitchers, how they evaluate some of their minor league players. And he told me that. The Cardinals and the Red Sox have been using spin rate calculations for about six years. And what they have found out was, as you mentioned, the perceived velocity of Estrada's fastball is higher 
because of the spin rate. And there's that good example 89 miles an hour. But the hitter sees it about 94. And they foul it back or they take it. How many times last year did we see Marco Estrada lock up right handed batters with an 89 90 mile an hour fastball that just got on him quickly. And then he's got that great change up. Third ball. Kulowitzki dives gets to his feet throws in time. We have said this time and time again I have not seen a shortstop as accurate with his throws as Troy Tulowitzki. When you play shortstop you're going to have to throw from all kind of different angles because you got so much ground to cover he covers this one up the middle and he doesn't have time to stand up and throw over the top he lets it go from down under and what's amazing about that it's right in the chest of Justin Smoke. You know what's amazing about that play. That was a curveball, and Tulowitzki saw the curveball called, and he's thinking that ball's going to be pulled because it's softer. But he hit it up the middle. He had to go in the other direction. Adam Jones bats with two outs. Middle infielders were always looking to catch your signs to get an advantage as to where the hitter might hit that ball. And a curveball, the shortstop expects it to be hit in the hole. Jones pops it up. Smoke over near the seats will lean in, but it's out of his reach. You know, shortstops are also, they'll give a sign to a third baseman, a verbal sign that an off speed pitch is coming to a right handed batter and expect it. You'll also see a shortstop lean to his right, maybe take a step. That happened a lot of times where the shortstop would give away the pitch that they would start. Stepping in that hole, and as a hitter, you can see that Tulowitzki didn't do that. He just anticipated that ball hit to him. Two and one now to Adam Jones. Jones left the game here on Tuesday night with a stomach virus, and actually ended up in the hospital that night. And he played last night. He's in there again tonight. He doesn't like to Adam. He was upset yeah. that he didn't get to finish that game. He doesn't like coming out of the lineup. He prides himself in playing 162. Manny Machado did it. Adam Jones did it a couple of years ago. Played all 162. There's that fastball. They were trying to get it upstairs, and that's what Estrada said was missing in his last outing against the Red Sox. He couldn't elevate it. He says I can't go fight bell meaning his fastball. He's got to go from the belly button to the letters. He's got to get it up there with that extra. Oomph there that's the one that they just can't get to it looks like they're trying it again. Just missed his spot and Russell saying that was a foul tip he said he foul tipped it. And they're not going to get the call Russell reacted very quickly and you can see John Gibbons says man Dan, that Sounded like it tipped the bat. Dan Bellino behind the plate. You can't see it, but you can hear it. From that replay, it didn't look like it. Didn't look like bat. it was close to the bat. Mm -hmm. Jones takes ball four. All new Honda Civic now available with turbo the 2016 North American car of the year. Two out walk issued to Adam Jones that'll bring Chris Davis to the plate he walked. His first time up. Brian Goins is. Way out there in right field. They play Davis to pull. The outfield plays him straight away, and they should. He has power to all fields when he hits it in the air. And they have to play deep. Anything into the gaps, they have to be able to cut this ball off.
3 and 0. And you can bet Chris Davis has the green light. Well, with his kind of power, you're right. Buck Showalter is going to give him every opportunity to try and lift one of these balls out of here. Let's see what Marco throws 3 and 0. Change up. Ball four. Davis walks for a second time. Back to back walks with two outs here in the third. Mark Trumbo will come to the plate. Trumbo was called out on what he thought was a fastball low out of the zone. He was called out looking. First and second, two outs. An hour past him. Marco Estrada a year ago had the best opponents batting average in the American League and the fourth best in baseball. Hitters hit just 203 against Marco Estrada for the season. A lot of soft contact also. And that's just his ability to take hard contact out of the bat by going soft and using the changeup. Using that cutter like we were just talking about, curveball at times. Right now he's he's fighting himself to try and get that change up where he he needs to. Popped up, Donaldson in foul territory. Over near the seats, leans in and makes the catch. Did he hold on? Donaldson got the ball and he must have dropped it. On the other side of the wall, looked like he had the ball in his glove when he went in. Tony ran down to the third base umpire over to make the call. It looked like Donaldson had the ball in the webbing of his glove the last time we saw him. Right here. He has it there, but couldn't hold on to it. Spins around and it must have fallen. You can see the fans saying that the ball fell out of his glove, acting like an umpire. Right when he hits the dirt and that gentleman in the white jacket there says he dropped the ball and no argument from Donaldson. Oh what a pitch by Marco Estrada he strikes out Trumbo with a couple of board to end the third. Blue Jays keep their one run lead.
Campbell keeping us up to date on all the Stanley Cup playoff scores. The Oakland A's have tied up the Yankees in New York. 1 1 ball game, bottom of the fourth. How about those Cubs? They've got an easy schedule coming up there in Cincinnati. They put up five runs already against the Reds. It's five nothing. What do you mean easy schedule? Easy Cincinnati. schedule with Cincinnati. You getting on my Reds? <laughs> 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 They've actually played pretty well this time. Cincinnati, eight and seven. Chicago, eleven and four. Three games ahead of your Reds. Thank you. Yeah, the Cubs are playing well. That's a good team. Justin Smoke. They almost went into St. Louis and swept the Cardinals and didn't get a pitched game from Lester or area. Almost swept them. Joe Madden did a pretty good job of setting up his rotation. He got John Lackey to start that series against his former mm -hmm. team, the Cardinals, and he was up for the challenge. He had 11 strikeouts. Yeah. Joe Madden doesn't miss too many opportunities to put his players in a good position. 0 oh 2 to Justin Smoke. Justin Smoke batting in front of his former high school teammate, Matt Weeders. We went to high school in South Carolina together. Matt was a year ahead of Smoke. But you can imagine these two guys playing on the same high school team. One hit in third, one hit in fourth. I asked Justin if there were other good players on that team. He said, he said, I think we had 10 players of our high school team play Division I college baseball. I hope they won the state. That's a pretty loaded <laughs> high school team. Sure is. There's a ball hit deep, deep to center field. Jones is back. He's not going to get this one. Bounces off the wall, and Justin Smoke cruises into second with the double. His first extra base hit of the season. That looks like the Justin Smoke we saw in spring training. Balance at the plate. And then a nice weight shift and attack a ball away from you. Like change up out away from him and Smokey smokes it to left field over the head of Adam Jones for extra bases. So he's getting on base and now he's starting to ring some base hits. Smoke picked up his eighth walk of the season in the first inning. Kevin Pilar. Pilar pulls it to Manny Machado on the first pitch. Machado stares back. Smoke to second. I thought Pilar is a little anxious now. Yeah, I, and I thought for a second there that that might have been a good time to maybe push a bunt. Push a bunt to the right side. You know they're going to throw you something soft because of the leadoff double. There's Smoke reading that ball right at Machado. You push a bunt to the right side and. With your speed, you maybe beat it out, but you also get that runner to third base. Brian Groen's grounded out to second base his first time up. Goins has had some good games against Chris Tillman. Coming into this game, six for 16. No swing on the appeal down to Tony Randazzo. It was a curveball that bounced in the dirt. He's had some good at bats, but like he was telling me today, he just hasn't had a lot to show for it. The at bat he had in the 10th inning last night against Gibbons. There were a couple of runners on base, and he was locked in. Found off a bunch of pitches and then hit a ball hard back through the middle. Looked like it was going to be a, an RBI single. Turned into a double play. But he's had some good at bats. Pilar and Goins were so important to the Blue Jays a year ago. For their ability to get on base and turn the lineup over. And hopefully that'll be the case again. Bring the top of the order up with runners on base. You're going to score a bunch of runs. Line drive right to J.J. Hardy. A step on the bag, and that double play will end the inning. Goins, another good at bat, ends up with nothing to show for it.
My Blue Jays members, it's that time of the night to log on to My Blue Jays and enter the following code MBJ9876. You do that, you will earn My Blue Jays points just for watching the broadcast. The entry box can be found on your My Blue Jays homepage. Code must be entered by 11:59 this evening. Buck. Thank you very much, Barry Davis, and there are a lot of Blue Jay fans on hand here at the ballpark. Should be a good crowd on Friday night as the Blue Jays return home after this seven-game road trip. The Oakland Athletics will be in town Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon games. Marco Estrada. First pitch base hit off the mound of Matt Readers. Readers ground him into a double play his first time. Gets a leadoff single here in the fourth. He's a good high ball hitter, Matt Readers. He had a high change up the other night from Marcus Stroman out of here for a home run. This is a high fastball. I'm able to get on top of this one and take it right back through the middle. That's that danger zone that Marco was mm -hmm. talking about. It's not low enough to be a good pitch and it's not high enough to be effective. Right in the middle. J.J. Hardy, shortstop. Marco Estrada had back to back games in last June where he took no hitters into the game late. First one was at Rogers Center against the Orioles. Took a no hitter into the eighth. Wasn't he perfect that day? Not in that game. In the second game, it in was Tampa the second Bay. one. Okay. All right. Down in Tampa Bay, he had a perfect game. Logan Forsythe had an infield hit to third base that broke up the perfect game, but he no hit the Orioles into the eighth at Rogers Center. First start against the Orioles was June 19th, and then on June 24th in St. Petersburg against the Rays, took a perfect game into the eighth. I remember those games. Everything was working for him. Everything he threw up there had pinpoint control. You can see him fighting it right now. That changeup looks like he's spinning off just a little bit. You can see how he's throwing and then falling off towards first base. And that's not allowing his arm to stay on top and to finish his pitches. Three balls and a strike. High and deep, but well foul off the bat of J.J. Hart. You got to remember, Marco Estrada didn't have a full spring training. He had a bad back, couldn't make his regular turn in spring training. Threw a couple games in the minor leagues and. Didn't make his first start till the 10th of April. Last year at this time, he was pitching out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays. He pitched very well early in the season out of the bullpen. He didn't make his first start till the 5th of May. Jonathan Scope, the second baseman. Is on deck. Matt Weeders takes his lead at first. Little looper, that's his trouble. That's going to drop for a base hit. J.J. Hardy just served that changeup in the left field. It's time to convert your big outdoor tasks into short, effortless work. Make the great outdoors even greater with Honda Power Equipment. Blue Jays turned a double play in the first that minimized the damage in the first inning. Estrada gave up base hits to the first three Orioles and then walked Chris Davis the fourth. He got a good call strike three on Trumbull and then got Weeders to ground into the inning ending double play. Changeup is so good, he can throw it back to back and still be effective. 
theoretically the changeup is designed to be a change of pace. Yeah. After a fastball, you change speeds, but his changeup is good. He can go back to back. And he'll throw it at any time. Right now, he just doesn't have the feel for it. Three yeah. in a row. See how he's falling off the mound? Ideally, Pete Walker would want him to go towards home plate so he's staying on line so the arm follows the chest. So everything is on line going towards home plate. Got that fastball in a good spot. Scope couldn't do anything but foul it back. His strata talks about the impact Mark Burley had on him. He said Burley helped him simplify things. He said, I was always worried about scouting reports and everything else. Now I'm just trying to execute pitches. Trusting his catcher and, and letting him call the game. And the only thing, it frees up your mind. The only thing you start thinking about is executing. I thought if I hit the glove, it doesn't matter what the pitch is. That's what Burley told him. So you just hit the glove and make a good pitch. Full count to Jonathan Scope. A 3 2 changeup. You got to believe in that pitch to throw it 3 and 2, and Estrada certainly does. That's six strikeouts for Marco. He got Scope last time. And this time he gets him on an elevated changeup. You can see how the timing. For that hitter, it just messes with them. Still, it's not his best changeup that we've seen. He's fighting it right now and he's really battling, grinding his way through this ball game. Nolan Rimel is a first ball fastball hitter. He's going to be looking for that heater on the first pitch. He was caught looking at strike three in the second. He got his fastball, fouled it off Russell Martin. And that's the pitch right there, that little cut fastball that Marco says really has taken him to the next level. Fastball situation. I can use that change up just to get him off the barrel of the bat. Crossed him up, threw him two fastballs in a row, the cutter, then the four seamer inside. Now Nolan Rimold's just got to be thinking, now he's got to throw me the changeup. <laughs> now he's talking to himself. He wouldn't bite. One and two, one out. Weeders leading off from second. J.J. Hardy's at first. Estrada has walked three. He struck out six. Joey Rickard on deck, the leadoff man. He's gotten one double play tonight. Good time for another one. Fly ball. Pilar's got plenty of room. Leaders goes back to tag at second, and he'll hold right there. Kevin Pilar throws a strike on one hop to Tulowitzki. Two down. So Estrada just won't give in. He will continue to pitch no matter what the situation, no matter what the count. He has to. He has to. That, that's who he is. And if he goes out there and tries to power the ball by some of these Baltimore Oriole hitters, it's going to get knocked around. 
Joey Rickard hit the line drive that went right through the glove of Josh Donaldson at third base. That started the bottom of the first base hit for Rickard. See the height of that fastball? Uh, that, that's where he's best. Yes. It looks so inviting, doesn't it, as a hitter? You think you can hit it nine miles and you swing right through it or you pop it up, foul it straight back? Same spot, same result. 0 oh 2. What he's doing right here. He's not even looking at the runners. He is concentrating on that glove and trying to hit that glove and execute those pitches. They got the catcher running at second. No reason to worry about him. So focus on Mark. Another high pitch. You just got to wonder when's he going to throw that changeup? Everything has been upstairs now. Or curveball. I mean, his curveball comes out of the same plane, doesn't it? And I don't think he's thrown Joey Rickert one yet. He can go either way. There's the changeup. It only took one changeup, and he gets the strikeout. The Orioles leave a pair. The Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead as we head to the fifth. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. The Blue Jays came into this game batting just 232 as a team, but you can see the top four hitters in the lineup, they're carrying their weight, but the bottom part of the order still looking to get the bats turned around, Pat. Well, that was the strength of the Blue Jays last season. It was the depth of their offensive team. It, the middle, you always had to be wary about the middle, those first four guys, but then you had Tulowitzki and you had Russell Martin and Colabello and Smoke and then you mentioned Pilar and Goins down at the bottom. That's what made them so dangerous right now. Just the top half is hitting. Once John Gibbons veterans start swinging the bat you'll start to see a lot more run score. Michael Saunders perfect on the night two for two. That's the first pitch up and away. You know, Gibby was saying some interesting things before the game today about his offense. And he said, We have to hit to win. 
you know, it comes down to pitching, yes, and it comes down to bullpens. He says we have to hit to win because we are not a manufacture runs type of team, and he's right. They don't have a lot of team speed where they they play that that small ball where you manufacture runs, a walk, a stolen base, a double steal, hit and runs, those type of. They don't have those type of players. They've got guys who have to hit to bring those those runs on the board. 3 and 0 to Michael Saunders. There's a strike. Saunders has scored six runs since moving into the leadoff spot. In those last eight games, I think over 400. On the ground, playing in the outfield will go to first. Went away here in the fifth. They played that perfectly. Once it became a hitter's count, they went into that three man shift on the right side of the infield. It worked out perfectly for Chris Tillman. So Tillman has certainly settled down. Both pitchers gave up runs in the first inning. Tillman gave up two runs on a couple of hits, a couple of walks, and a hit batter. Josh Donaldson with an RBI double in the first. Going after that first pitch breaking ball. I think you always have to be wary of these three guys. Wherever you are in the ball game, you got to be wary. And just like the Blue Jays, when they're pitching to Baltimore, you'd rather face Manny Machado and the rest of them. Two outs, nobody on base. Fly ball to you, shallow right. Rymel comes in. Two down. That'll bring Jose Bautista to the plate, and Bautista had an eventful trip to the plate last time. Well, he got a couple of breaking balls that he thought were inside. You can see the first one called a strike. He's not real happy with that. After grounding out, then he started to take his batting gloves off. Then the stare down continued and started between he and Dan Bellino, the home plate umpire, all the way out to right field. To his credit, Bautista did not show a lot of emotion. And hasn't shown a lot of emotion so far this season on pitches that he thought were off the plate. Yeah, he's done a terrific job of keeping everything inside. He didn't want it to affect the team, and obviously, he knows the strike zone. Two outs. Well, Jose is also ultra competitive. I mean, he really is. And Every one of those pitches are important. The at bat, instead of hitting 2 and 0, oh, he was hitting 0 oh, 2 and he got in, into a defensive mode. Keep throwing him that breaking ball. That's the pitch that was called a strike by the home plate umpire. It's hard enough to hit in the big leagues when you get a strike. But when they start calling pitches out of those zone strikes, it's nearly impossible to hit. Chris Tillman has given up four hits tonight. Three of them have been doubles. Donaldson doubled. Saunders doubled. And Justin Smoke hit a double. Another inside breaking ball. I think they're throwing that pitch inside by design. Maybe to lock him up a little bit because he's going to look for the ball out over the plate. I think you're playing with fire. If well, those pitches are on the inner part of the plate, the majority of them are curveballs. The two home runs he hit against Rick Porcello were sliders that were on the inner half. That's just a show me fastball. No intent to throwing it over. Big bat on deck, Edwin Encarnacion walked in, ground it out. Fastball drilled to right, but that's going to hang up for Nolan Rymel. Three up, three down. The Blue Jays go quietly in their half of the fifth.
Let's follow the Blue Jays live on your phone and tablet with MLB.com at bat app. Customize at bat to feature the Blue Jays and stay up to the moment, any moment, with scores, news, live game video highlights, and much more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one bat for live baseball. Buck, I found out while I was off last week, it works at the grocery store. Just prop it up in the cart and watch the game while you're grocery shopping. You're grocery shopping? Got to do something. You don't have a guy to do that for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I lent him to you. <laughs> well, if you had your MLB at bat right now, you'd know that Jake Arrieta is no hitting the Ritz. Manny Machado goes after the first pitch and pops it out of play over the screen. In that game also, the Cubs are laying it to the Reds. 9 nothing now. Told you they had an easy schedule. <laughs> The chatter fouls it straight back. It's 0 and 2. Jake Arietti, we mentioned he's throwing a no hitter in Cincinnati. He's had 23 consecutive quality starts. That's the longest stretch of quality starts. Since Bob Gibson had 26 in a row between 67 and 68. Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say to that. Manny Machado strikes out. Run down. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Well, the Orioles would love to have Jake Arrieta in their rotation during that stretch of 26 consecutive quality starts. Arrieta is 19 and one with an ERA of 0.91. He was their opening day starter a few years ago, Jake Arrieta. Now, that lone loss was that the no hitter that uh, Cole Hamels threw? Against him, I think it could have been. Yeah, I think that's his yeah. only loss in that time. Adam Jones gets jammed and lifts a pop-up behind second. Bowens calls for it. Two quick outs here in the fifth. Yeah, Arietta was a top prospect of the Orioles for a long time, and they just really couldn't unlock the key to his success and he has turned things around over in Chicago couldn't get the breaking ball over when he was here but you could tell he had a great arm and he has found he has found it in Wrigley Chris Davis has walked both times he's come to the plate tonight against Marco Estrada. You see that 86 mile an hour pitch. That's the cut fastball. And just enough movement. And the theory is just to take it off the barrel of the bat if the hitter swings. Three and oh. There's another cut. Now you made a great point about the turnaround for Estrada was directly related to that cutting. Yeah, he said that's something that I added. I think it's helped me a lot. Davis walks for the third time. That's four walks issued by Marco Estrada. Navigate the lineup. You can see him shaking his head, making some bad pitches to Davis, but he has walked Davis three times, but he struck out Mark Trumbo twice tonight. Yeah. Discretion, the better part of valor for sure. Trumbo's a dangerous hitter, but he has struck out looking and swinging. It's this one on the ground. Donaldson has a go off his glove. It's past Tulowitzki. Davis is headed for third. He's going to get there. It'll be a base hit for Trumbo. 
Chris Davis did a good job running with his head up. He saw the ball go off the third baseman's glove, and then Tulowitzki had it go off his glove in the left. Chris Davis is a good athlete. You can put him at first and third in the outfield. You all know about the home runs. He can run the base as well too. This ball off the glove of Donaldson actually over plays it. Slows it down to Lewitsky goes out there to get it. And he just clips it. And here's Davis the plays right in front of him. And he hustles into third base without a throw. Matt Wieters had a leadoff single his last time up. There's a little bit higher pitch. Tantalizing. That's the same fastball that Wieters hit for a base hit back in the fourth. That from Giddy. Loosening up. On that changeup. Yeah, he's done a good job using his fastball. And as Marco said, I trust my catcher. I just try to execute the pitch. Hit that glove. He's going to have to hit the glove now. Matt Weeder's got great plate coverage. For the swing. Dan Bellino calls him for his swing and he threw him out. He just threw Matt Wieters out of the game. And now Buck Showalter has come out the home plate, but it's too late. Wieters is thrown out of this ball game by the home plate umpire, and now the manager might follow suit. You know why he's so mad? Matt Wieters was walking towards the dugout. He had to say to Dan Bellino, walked away. And with his back to the umpire, gets pitched out of this game. Buck Showalter is red hot. One more time, change up down. Weeder says, I didn't go. Can't believe it, number one. And then has his say, and he's walking away. He's done. See ya. Weeders is out of the game. Estrada is through the fifth. Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic, now available with Turbo, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Back here in Baltimore, Buck Showalter is very disappointed in the umpire, Dan Bellino. This is the check swing that led to the ejection of Matt Waiters. All he's saying is, hey, you got to check down there at third. And then he walked toward the dugout. And Dan Bellino throws him out of the game. And Buck Showalter is saying, How can you throw my guy out while he's walking back towards the dugout? He's not allowed to have his say what he thought. And this thing, this went on for a couple of minutes. Yeah, and I think the argument that Showalter was putting up was that all Weeders was doing was walking back to the dugout, and he said, Hey, you should have checked with the third base umpire on that check swing. Two strikeouts in that inning for Estrada. 
He has nine strikeouts now. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Well once again we got a lot of things going on here in Baltimore. Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead as they're set to bat in the sixth. All the scoring took place in the first inning. The two starters have settled down. Bouncing ball toward third, cut off by Machado in front of Hardy. Goes up. In front of Sir, one down. Chris Tillman has really righted the ship, hasn't he? 38 pitches in that first inning. He's still under 100 right now, pitching into the sixth inning. This reminds me of that game that we were talking about back in 2014 when he got lit up early in that game but stuck around long enough to win it. April 23rd at Rogers Center in 2014 the Orioles took a one nothing lead against Dustin McGowan and then Tillman gave up six in the bottom of the second but they left him in the game the Orioles would come back and score six of their own in the top of the fifth and Tillman would eventually win the game pitching five and two thirds and the Orioles won ten to eight. Greg Tulowitzki has flied out and was called out on strikes. Caleb Joseph takes over behind the plate for Matt Wieters. Machado backs up a step. Strong arm in time. Blue Jays will be back at Rogers Center tomorrow night. And if you like pitching, you're going to like this matchup. The Oakland A's will send Sonny Gray to the mound to open up the series against Aaron Sanchez. Both young, hard throwing right handers. Gray's 26, Sanchez 23, and they're both off to good starts. Aaron Sanchez is off to a great start. Look at that earned run average at 1.3. His fastball's just been exploding. Sonny Gray, we just didn't see him last year. They missed him. They were scheduled to, to face him one time out there in Oakland, but he was scratched. Got sick, I think. Mm -hmm. He was ready to make the start, and they scratched him. And Blue Jays weren't too upset about that. Catcher Russell Mark. Russell struck out in the third on a high fastball. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning. And 0 to Russell Martin. Four pitch walk. Third walk issued by Tillman. First since the first inning. He was having some trouble there throwing the ball to Martin. That is TJ McFarland loosening up. He was up at the beginning of this inning in case he ran into some trouble. But he gets two quick outs and then he can't throw a strike to Martin. I think his toe hole where he was landing on the mound and kicked up some dirt and did not have a good landing spot. Justin Smoke in a line drive over the head of the center fielder Adam Jones to the wall in deep center field his last time up. His first extra base hit of the season. Smoke had a pinch hit in the ninth inning in last night's game. Had a bases loaded walk in the first and doubled in the fourth.
Case could use some breathing room here against the Orioles. That's been a familiar theme. Haven't been able to add on runs. They get a lead early and then just kind of sit on it. To the screen and bounces back to the catcher, but Martin advances on the wild pitch. Gelman's thrown 104 pitches now. The previous high came in his last start at Texas. He threw 86 pitches in five and a third. Had a big inning in that game, also. You can see Caleb Joseph just into the ball game. Cannot corral that curveball. Gilman strikes out smoke that ends the top half of the six and that might end the night for Chris Tillman Blue Jays clinging to a 2 1 lead that Ben Diddy into the ball game in relief of Estrada. Fans, share your passion for Canada's team. There are only nine days left to sign the Blue Jays fan board and have your cheer included in the Blue Jays player tunnel at Rogers Center. Visit rogerscelebrates.com for details. That big applause is for you, Buck and Pat. I'm not quite sure of that. I think it was more about the kiss cam than anything. <laughs> <laughs> New pitcher for the Blue Jays is the switch pitcher, Pat Venditti. Venditti. Making his third appearance of the season. And second on this road trip. Uh, he pitched the first game in Boston for the Blue Jays back on the 15, a third of an inning. He was charged with a hit and an earned run in that game. This should be very fun right now. There's no switch hitters in the lineup for the Baltimore Orioles, so Pat can get the matchup that he likes. One thing that we have seen from Venditti is that he throws strikes. Might not be overpowering. Fastballs in the mid 80s. Throws a slider from both sides. Yeah, he's he keeps basic, everything down. Basically a sinker slider type of pitcher. He's got to rely on putting the ball where he needs to. On the corner, stay out of the middle and keep it down. Ground ball, Goins positioned perfectly. One out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you very much, Jamie. Oakland at that four-two lead.
just uh, no hits for the Reds against Jake Garrietta. They are now in the top of the seventh. It's nine at nothing. But it's a tough schedule. <laughs> for who? The Cubs or the Reds? No, it's going to be a rough year for the Reds. I know they're off to a good start. I'm sorry, but I can't disagree with you. <laughs> I'm a realist. One and two now to Jonathan Scope. He's had a rough night, a couple of strikeouts. There's that slider and a very defensive swing from Scope. Marco Estrada had nine strikeouts. He had nine strikeouts in his final game last year against Tampa Bay in six and two thirds. Orioles have not seen much of Pat Venditti so they don't have a lot of information on her. His five batters have had one at bat a piece against him. So if you see some funny swings like we have seen from Jonathan Scope in this at bat, it's understandable. Again, he'll always have the advantage being able to be a, a switch pitcher. Right-hander versus right-handed hitters. That's pulled foul. This is Venditti's third career appearance against the Orioles. He's thrown just an inning and two-thirds prior to this appearance. Well, Marco Estrada, he was on the ropes in the first inning, but he was able to get out of it, and he has pitched effectively tonight. Five innings, six hits, an earned run, and nine strikeouts for the right hand. I think he'd be the first one to tell you that it was a grind to get through those five innings against the Baltimore Orioles. Four walks and nine strikeouts. He also spread out those six hits. He stranded eight Orioles in his five minutes. And if the bullpen can hold on, he'd be in line for the win. Nolan Rimo takes the first pitch strike. Shoots this one down the right side. That's going to be a foul ball. Slice just foul down the right field line. That's a couple times this series that we have seen balls go down that right field line, but then slice just foul. That's Buck Showalter hoping for the best, but that ball clearly foul down the right field line. Time for a slider right here. He threw the slider, but it was just a tad low. Then a Monday worked in the game last night. Monday walked a man and got a pop up just one third of an inning. There's a slider on the inside corner, and Rival not happy with the call. Neither are the fans. They're letting them have it. But Ben Diddy will take it. That was the front door slider. Randall had a good look at it. Thought it was around the inside part of the plate. Didn't cross the plate. And you can see his reaction to the called strike three. There's a good slider for a strike. Joey Rickard. And it is hit streak to six straight with a first inning single. Another two hit game for Rickett. Been a spark plug for the Baltimore Orioles. So some patience at the plate. 
getting a share of base hits and clutch base hits for the Orioles. Now John Gibbons got to figure out what to do with Manny Machado. Bigger had three hits in the game last night in five at bats. He's two for four so far in this ball game, and now Manny Machado. Manny drove in a run in the first inning. He has since grounded out and struck out. Two outs. Jonathan Scope at second. Joey Rickard at first. Bowens near second will go to first. That'll end the inning. The Orioles strand a pair. The Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead as they look to start the seventh. Kevin Pillar will lead things off, then Ryan Goins back to the top of the order. Michael Saunders has a couple of hits tonight. Flyaway contest is now on. Enter for your chance to cheer on the Blue Jays in Boston with WestJet. Go to bluejays.com slash WestJet flyaway to enter. Buck. Thank you, Mary Davis. As the Blue Jays are set to bat here in the top of the seventh, Dylan Monday will be the new pitcher. We mentioned Monday worked a third of an inning in last night's game. Monday came in and walked Troy Tulowitzki and then got Chris Colabello to pop out to end the inning, and he was replaced by Darren O'Day. At one time, a very big prospect for the Baltimore Orioles, and then ran into a lot of arm problems. He had Tommy John surgery June of 2013, and his goal was to get back on the mound in one year. And wouldn't you know it, June of 2014, he pitched five innings in A ball, and he, and he made it. Got back on the mound one year after his Tommy John surgery. Kevin Pilar has gone over two so far. Blue Jays have just four hits. Orioles have out hit them seven to four. Okay. Well, I had to leave his feet. Throws hard. You have to respect that fastball. This one, they want to. Come inside against Pilar and it tails right underneath him. He loses his toe hole at the plate. Out in front. 
Bundy then after he came back from Tommy John surgery had shoulder problems. Oh, it's just been a nightmare for young Devin Bundy. He's still just 23 years old. He missed the entire 2013 season. Ninety four Pilar strikes up. Well Chris Tillman he had all sorts of trouble in the first inning but did he settle down he goes six innings allows two runs in the first inning and four hits overall he walked three and struck out four pitched six innings kept his club within striking distance to 105 pitches 105 pitches 38 of them in that first inning you were just talking about and then gutted it out gave up just two hits the rest of the way four hits overall allowed by Chilman three doubles Michael Saunders has two of the four hits so far tonight he'll be next Jones backs up a few steps back pedals makes the catch two up two down for Bundy here in the summer some people around the Orioles believe that Bundy will make his way into the rotation before this season's all said and done he was a starter in the minor leagues before all those injuries that you were talking about so is he durable enough in that starting rotation or is he better in spurts being a young player in terms of major league experience Buck Showalter can pitch him out of the bullpen and control his innings and control the batters he faces if he wants him to face the bottom of the order for an inning you can control that coming out of the pen a lot of managers think that's the best way to break in young pitchers in the majors Michael Saunders is two for three with a double. In using a young pitcher out of the bullpen, like you said, you can pick his spots. You match him up, bottom of the order, get him in, get him out. Feels good about himself, builds his confidence. Not a whole lot of information out there, and just quick in and quick out. Build up his confidence, and, and then maybe down the road he becomes a starter. Makes a good pitch to Saunders. Jones on the run. He'll get there. And Dylan Bundy retires the side in order. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. One ball game, and Chris Davis will bat second in this inning. And you look at the home runs against the Blue Jays since 2008. Chris Davis and Adam Jones, they are first and third on this list, and they will bat back to back in this inning. First and second in this inning. Chris Davis, 31 of them, and he can hit it out anywhere. Adam Jones, the same way. Jones already tonight's got a double and a walk and a pop out. 
That's just two of the many big bats that the Orioles have. You've got to be on your toes, and that's why I think they're never out of any games because of that home run power. Pulowitzki dives, gets to his feet, and throws out Adam Jones for the second time. Tulowitzki goes to his left. He made a similar play on Manny Machado in the third inning. It looked like a instant replay. Ball up the middle, full extension for Tulo. Gets to his feet and throws a strike over to first base. Adam Jones a little bit quicker than Manny Machado, so he's got to hurry his throw just a little bit, and it's right on target. I mean, every throw he makes is chest high across the diamond, no matter where he throws it from. Venditti turns around and will throw left handed to Chris Davis. Davis has walked all three plate appearances tonight. His numbers as a reliever, a little bit better. Left handed pitcher versus a left handed batter in his career. And here's the value of him right now. You don't have to burn through two or three different pitchers. Check swing strike to get the matchup that you want. They need a, a little bit of length out of that bullpen tonight. They, they could use two innings out of Pat Vendetti. Marco was only able to go five innings. You get two from him, and then it's set up nicely. Well, you're right. You make a great point about the value of having that Venditti. You don't have to go lefty, righty, lefty. Keep him in there. Just missed downstairs. That low strike has been good all night for the Blue Jays pitchers. Full count. Trumbo on deck. How about the patience that Chris Davis has shown? It's a different team. It's a different. They're really selective, much more patient. Breaking ball. He has walked four times tonight. Man at first one out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Jake Arrieta just for good measure also has two hits in the game. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Chris Davis four walks. Here's Trumbo and that hits him. That first pitch slider hits Trumbo and now two aboard. Joby Agini, he took the loss last night. Brett sees the left hander. They're throwing down in the bullpen, and here's that slider that gets away from Venditti and hits Trumbull. Could you see his hand just couldn't get on top of that ball like he needed to to pull it into the strike zone? John Gibbons sending word down to that dug, or that bullpen to speed it up. But Venditti throws from Sidearm. It's not even three quarters. It's sidearm, and on that slider, you gotta make sure you get your hand on top of that baseball so you can spin it. That time, it was underneath it. So Caleb Joseph is the batter. He'll bat for the first time tonight. He came into the ball game after Matt Wieters was ejected at the end of the fifth inning, arguing with the umpire. First pitch strike. And Weeders is a switch here. So that would have been interesting. Caleb huh? Joseph scored the winning run in last night's game. He doubled with two outs in the tenth. Scored on the pass ball. Chris Davis. Four walks tonight, first time in his career he's had a four walk game. The Jays didn't want anything to do with him. Oh and two.
One out. Davis at second. Trumbull at first. Line drive to right. Bautista on one hop. Here's the throw to the plate, and they stop Davis at third. That'll lower the bases. Caleb Joseph with a line single to right. And that'll bring John Gibbons out of the mound. He's going to go to the left-hander, Rick Cecil. He made the call for Brett Cecil. Now Cecil's not sure. J.J. Hardy is the batter. He's a right-handed batter, but Gibbons made the call for mm -hmm. the lefty. And, and Cecil saying, you want me? Because there's three righties coming up. So Brett Cecil will be into the game. He takes over for Pat Venditti. Bases are loaded. Blue Jays clinging to a one run lead. Cecil will make his second appearance of this ball game. Cecil came in Tuesday night, pitched the eighth inning, got two outs, gave up a double to Manny Machado and walked. Three right handers Nolan coming in for the Baltimore Orioles and Brett Cecil, the left hander. Pretty obvious what they, they need and what they want. John Gibbons going to his veteran Cecil. He needs a strikeout and he can deliver. J.J. Hardy. Hardy single to left field in the fourth. Two balls and no strikes. Anxious moment for the Blue Jay fans. He likes that ball up. You got to keep that ball down against J.J. Hardy. Make him reach for that. His batting average last year on low pitches was over 120. That time it was up. The center Pilar on the run. He makes the catch. Davis tags from third, comes in to score. And it's all tied up. JJ Hardy with the sacrifice fly, his seventh RBI of the season. Pilar runs it down, and they're going to score the tying run on the sacrifice fly. Mark Trumbull out at second base. Wasn't real sure if Pilar was going to catch that ball and 
failed to tag up and move the third base on that long fly ball. So maybe the Blue Jays catch a break. Jonathan Scope has struck out twice and walked. Ground ball. Donaldson will go to second. That'll end the inning. But the Orioles score a run on one hit, a walk, a hit batter, and it's a 2 2 game. Donaldson, Bautista, in kind of soon. Brought to you by the all-new Honda Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. After a leadoff single by Michael Saunders, high fastballs clocked the left field. He clobbered it, got on top of it for his fifth double of the season, his league leading 15th RBI. Josh Donaldson got the Blue Jays' first run of the ball game with our drive of the game. So Donaldson will lead things off for the Blue Jays here in the eighth. It's a 2 2 tie. Donaldson, Bautista, and Encarnacion. JD is 1 for 3 with a double and a run score. Bautista 0 for 3, and Encarnacion has grounded out twice and walked. Darren O'Day pitched the eighth in last night's game, retired the bottom third in order. Two ground ball outs and a pop up. Last year he was third among American League relievers in earned run average with 152. This year in seven games, he hasn't given up a run yet. He is the setup man in front of Zach Britton. It's the eighth inning. It's ties. So Mark Showalter brings in Darren O'Day to face the toughest part of the Blue Jay lineup. First base umpire Adam Amari said that Donaldson went too far. O'Day ahead 0-2. Quick adjustment for these hitters after facing over the top pitching all night long you've got to change your sights and try to pick up that release point of Darren O'Day and that's what makes him so tough because he'll throw from down under there and keep the ball down but with two strikes he can elevate that fastball even though it was 87 miles an hour there it is another another one you can see that ball got by Donaldson. Two balls and two strikes. Donaldson leading off the top of the eighth. Darren O'Day re-signed with the Orioles. He was a free agent and signed back here and got a nice contract and he's done a good job for 
this ball club. They got a nice bullpen. Yes. Brad Brock, Darren O'Day, Zach Britton, and they're going to get Brian Mattis back over the weekend. Some guys, if you're comfortable and you feel good and you're in a good spot, why move? Darren O'Day has found a home here. Donaldson drives that ball into the seats down the right side. Strikes out Donaldson. And now we got the showdown everybody's been waiting for. Darren O'Day against Jose Bautista. They have a little bit of a history together, Jose and O'Day. O'Day has struck him out in the past. Bautista's taken him deep in the past. He's also hit Jose a couple of times. Bautista has four career home runs against Darren O'Day in 18 at bats. Absolutely incredible how these two have gone head to head so frequently. And Key situations. There are the numbers that you're talking about. And if they're facing each other, you know it's a close ball game. It's either tied or a one or two run difference. So those home runs that Jose has hit against them have been big home runs. Downstairs. He's just a guy that seems to rise to the occasion. Bautista. And I mentioned that they drilled him one time and then Jose drilled him out of the ballpark. Side. Three and oh. Of course, Bautista will have the green light tie ball game and given his history. Yeah. You just look at the number. In this 2 2 game, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Jake Arrieta has been on an incredible run. He's had one no hitter, hasn't he? Yep. Against the Dodgers, I believe. And as we mentioned earlier, he has two hits tonight. Edwin Encarnacion is 0 for 2 with a walk. He carried an eight game hit streak into this ball game. Blue Jays only have four hits. Bautista was getting a walking lead and O'Day had a snap throw to first. He had to scramble back in a hurry. Watch him over there, just kind of just nonchalantly trying to get off the base and has to dive back. First pitch slider. Edwin has had his problems in the past against O'Day. He's been able to figure him out just yet. Two for 15 for his career. So you knew that O'Day wasn't going to challenge Bautista. And he wasn't going to challenge Edwin on that first pitch. Outfield deep with Encarnacion at the plate. Two perfect pitches. 
But on the outside, Cook, man, not much you can do with that. But this is where Encarnacion gets dangerous right here with two strikes. Edwin had a couple of big hits in last night's game, including a two out RBI double. Two two ball game. Blue Jays scored two runs in the top half of the first. The Orioles got a single run in the bottom half of that inning and then tied it up with a run in the seventh. Sacrifice fly by J.J. Hardy. Blue Jays have split the first six games of this seven game road trip. They've split the first two here. This is the rubber match of this three game series. If you could win this ball game, have a winning record on the road trip, maybe gain some momentum heading back home. Every game has been back and forth and tight. Inside the appeal to first, no swing, says Adam Omari. And it went in Carnacio. <laughs> I love that when he checks it. He's like, go ahead. Check with the first base umpire. I didn't go. Confirmed. One and two count to Incarnacion. Him up with that high pitch. He strikes out two strikeouts for O'Day. Those uh, first two sliders to Encarnacion put that in Edwards' mind. So then when he goes upstairs, look how far he comes from down under. And then that elevated fastball. Encarnacion can't hold up. He was looking for that slider down and away. You can see the way he stepped. He was looking for it. He was striding out there. Troy Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki has gone 0 for 3 tonight. Lewitsky with a modest four game hit streak. Boy, he can paint that outside corner with that slow slider. Tough. Tough on right handers. So leaning out over the plate, right? Looking for that slider and buzzes you up and in. See the catcher Caleb Joseph was set up down and away. So now Tulowitzki, not really sure where O'Day is going next. The location of those pitches. A sidearm delivery in that frisbee breaking ball catches the corner down and away. You can see why he was <laughs> third in the American League for relievers last year at a 1 5 earned run average. Just doesn't give you anything to hit, just doesn't make mistakes.
Two and two now to Tulowitzki. Bautista drew a one out walk. He's still at first. Carlson struck out to start the inning, and Carlson was the second out on strikes. Jays have managed just four hits tonight. O'Day strikes out the side. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a 2 2 game. Now, time for Blue Jay Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. will take place May 9th through 13th at Rogers Center and across Canada throughout the summer. These tryouts will help determine the players that will be selected to represent their province and region at Terminate 12. Register now at bluejays.com slash T12 for the T12 tryout in your area. Buck, a fantastic tournament the T12 is. Well, it sure is, Barry. A great opportunity for those college eligible Canadian baseball players to show off their skills. Another good ball game. We had a 3 3 game into the 10th inning last night. It is 2 2, bottom of the eighth here tonight. Nolan Rimel goes after the first offering from Brett Cecil. Over the top of that pitch. Nasty. You know, we are talking about this road trip and how the the games have all been great games. Every one of them have been separated by no more than two runs. A couple of losses in Boston by two runs. And a couple of wins by the Blue Jays, a one run. Win and a two run win, and then a one run win here by the Blue Jays. I mean, every game's close. These feel like September games, not April games. Yes, they do. The managers are going to their best relievers late in the game. I think most people are of the mind that this is a very tightly contested division. I don't think there's anybody that's got a clear cut advantage. Certainly, you could say Boston has some concerns. Hmm. David Price, he took a beating today at the hands of Tampa Bay. Price charged with eight earned runs on eight hits in three and two thirds. His ERA, 
What's amazing about that is Tampa Bay came in today having scored only 40 runs all season long. 40 runs in 14 games. Grimo hits the soft liner to Justin Smoke, one down. And they drop a 12 spot on the Red Sox. Evan Longoria hit a home run off of Price, as did Kurt Casale, the catcher. Tampa Bay used seven pitchers in that game. Joey Ricker bounces it up the middle. He has his second three hit game of the series. Well, you can see why Brooke Showalter and the Baltimore Orioles like this kid. He was with the Tampa Bay Rays. They picked him in the Rule 5 draft, and he's given them some energy. Three hits in last night's game, a couple of infield hits, and now another three hit night. Three singles. This one right back through the middle out of the reach of Ryan Goins. Rickard has seven hits in the three game series. Brett Cecil will work to Manny Machado. Machado one for four goes after the first pitch. Machado two for nine going head to head with Brett Cecil. And remember, Jesse Chavez has been hampered by a bad back, and he's probably not available tonight. When asked about that before the ball game, the answer was, well, if you see him up, I guess he's okay. If you don't see him up, he's not okay. Ball gets away from Russell Martin. Rickard moves into second base. Representing the go-ahead run. That might be a pass ball right there. Something that we saw in last night's game that was the winner for the Orioles. Cutter. And Russell has it go right off of his glove. It is a pass ball. Up shallow right long run for Bautista. He's not going to get there. Rickards around third. He's going to score, and the Orioles have taken the lead. A little bloop drops in fair territory. Manny Machado with his second RBI of the game. Has given the Orioles the lead. You know, the pass ball takes the double play out of order, but it also scores this run. He doesn't score on this ball. Bautista tries to knock that ball down, and then it gets away from him. Rickard can't go anywhere. If he's on first base, he would only advance to second, but he's on second. Now he can advance all the way home with the tie breaking run. Everything Manny Machado. Is swinging at is finding a hole. Joe Biagini starts to throw for a second time tonight. Adam Jones goes after the first pitch. Joey Rickard has scored two of the three oil runs tonight. Jones doubled in the first inning. He has a walk. He is one for three. Robbed of a hit his last time up by Tulowitzki. Checked his swing. Two balls and a strike. First base open. 
And you got the left hander on deck who is prone to strike out against Brett Cecil. I didn't think he'd throw in the fastball. Two and two now. Marco Strata started, went five innings through 104 pitches. He was out of the game. Pat Venditti. Now Brett Cecil. Cecil game into the game with one out in the seventh. Give up the sacrifice fly to J.J. Hardy that tied it up. Now Martin and Cecil are going to talk about this next pitch to Adam Jones. Well, you got first base open and Davis is on deck. No reason to give in to Jones. Manny Machado at second. That'll be a breaking ball. Well, it looks like Brett's got a, a plan in mind. And he did it. Great pitch. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Kimball. What a dominant run for Jake Arietta. His 24th consecutive quality start. Closing in on that. Streak of 26 straight by Bob Gibson. Fans were, or the players were, congratulating them. They were all meeting on the, the field, and a fan came out of the stands <laughs> and got in with the Cubs, and they shoot him off of there really quick. How about that? A no-no. Cecil ahead of Davis, 0-2. Strike three called Cecil strikes out Jones and Davis to end the eighth but the Orioles have taken the lead Manny Machado with a bloop RBI single Zach Britton in for the save Blue Jays down by a run.
The closer for the Baltimore Orioles is in looking for his fourth save of the season. Zach Britton making his seventh appearance. He pitched in the game last night. He hasn't given up a hit to a lefty yet this season, right? He's hitting just 188 against him. Three for three, a perfect three for three in save opportunities. Hard fastball, hard breaking ball. Here's the thing about the Baltimore Orioles bullpen. We talked about that for the last three nights, how good they are. They don't give up home runs. They've only given up two home runs all year long. And Zach Britton, tough to get the ball in the air against. That bowling ball sinker. Mid 90s, that pitch was 97. Britton retired the side in the ninth last night. Saunders, Donaldson, and Bautista. Russell Martin has been on base twice. He was hit by a pitch and walked. Officially 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Little chopper toward third. That's a fair ball. Now it's foul. But Shadow let it roll. You're going to get a lot of ground balls when Zach Britton's on the mound. And you look at the relief ground ball rate since 2014. He's the leader of the pack. Minimum 100 innings also. And think about that. Relievers usually throw one inning, especially closers. And Zach Britton's number one overall. 77.2% ground ball rate. That's what I mean about trying to get the ball in the air. It's impossible. The major league average is 46. He's up to 77. Tough to get the ball in the air, tough to get home runs off of this guy. They made a brilliant decision when they decided to put Zach Britton in the bullpen. And he has really taken to this job. Strikes out a one down now for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osbach. That's all coming up right after this ball game. Ken Reed and Ivanka Osmak will have all the highlights of all the action tonight. Justin Smoke, he is one for two with a walk. Blue Jays have just four hits tonight. They got half of those in the first inning. And had that starter on the ropes, but just. Again, could not deliver that knockout punch. Something that has been lacking so far this year. Written a career. Eight for eight in saves. He had 24 consecutive save opportunities last year. In the middle of the year. Eight for eight against the Blue Jays. They have hit just two eleven against Britain. In case you're thinking about a home run, he's only allowed one home run to the Blue Jays. Look at that ball dive bombing out of the zone. 96. It's tough to do as a hitter, but you got to make him get it up. You have to see the ball up high. And if you start swinging at that ball that you think's right at the knees, it's going to drop right out of that strike zone. Bouncing ball up the middle. J.J. Hardy from behind the back. Two down. Hardy had a long run. He knew he had time with Smoke running. Took his time and made a strong throw. Yeah, he did. He took his time. He got to the ball. And watch how he sets himself to make sure he throws accurately over to first base. Quick feet. He shuffles those feet. Keeps them underneath them. Sets up and makes a strong throw. This is the 17th straight game the Blue Jays have played against American League East opponents. Tomorrow night they'll see a team from the West, Oakland. They are 8 and 8. 
in this first 16. Kevin Pillar trying to keep the Blue Jays' hopes alive. Pilar has a hit in two at bats against Britain. Chris Colabella has grabbed the bat. He's on deck. He will bat for Goins if Pilar can reach base. Loop in the glass. That's his need right now. Somebody get on. Six. <laughs> Little number. Britain will underhand. That's the ball game. Zach Britton picks up his fourth save. Darren O'Day is the winner. And the Blue Jays are stymied by the Orioles pitching just four hits tonight, and they couldn't do much after the first inning. They are off to a great start. Single double to start it off with Saunders and Donaldson. They also had a walk, a hit batter, and another walk in that first inning, but really nothing after that. It worked out perfectly for Buck Showalter's team. They got